Now we come to the accelerated forward-backward method, sometimes also known under the name uh, fast iterative shrinkage thresholding algorithm, um, with an acronym which would force me to make this video inaccessible for, to children in Sweden. And the assumptions are the same as for the forward-backward method. Um, so we have a function f which is convex differentiable and has a Lipschitz continuous gradient. And uh, G is proper convex and lower semi-continuous. And the computational effort in each iteration will also be nearly the same as for the usual forward-backward method. So we will use one evaluation of the gradient and one evaluation of um, the proximal point of G per iteration. And somehow, magically, we get a much, much better convergence rate. So it's not just a constant factor, it's just O of 1, uh, O of 1 over n squared um, instead of O over 1, one o, o of 1 over n per iteration. Okay, and I have, it's, it still seems like magic that you can just do this, um, but I, I try to make uh, this as understandable as, as possible. So we start our analysis with um, uh, assuming that x bar is a minimizer of, uh, let x bar b, of course, minimizer of f plus g. Okay, and we we want to create some kind of telescoping uh, telescoping inequality. And uh, the way to do this is, or the, in the, great, the basic idea is to incorporate not only the point at the current iteration, but also some kind of a history. In this case, just the previous iteration. And this is also um, important in the telescoping equation. And this motivates a bit why we are doing, why we're choosing stuff in exactly the way we're choosing it. Okay, so. Um, we are interested in the in the following quantity. We take x n plus one minus x bar um, plus lambda n plus one of uh, x n plus one minus x n. So we can we can see this x n plus one minus x n. This is kind of the progress we have made um, from. Uh, from xn to xn plus 1, and we, we assume that this is the right direction, and so it, it's, it might be better if we, if we add some portion of this, the portion um, in size determined by lambda n plus 1. Okay, and to get this telescoping um, expression, we just want to subtract the, the corresponding term. Uh, Lambda n x n minus x n minus one. Okay. So here we of of course have to add that we want uh, x n plus one x n x n minus one in h lambda n lambda n plus one real numbers. Okay. This is. For now, just some expression, and we want to see what we get here um, when we when we assume that we will get this telescoping expression in the end. Okay, so here we can we can see that well we have basically one plus lambda n plus one x n plus one minus x n. Okay, this is basically this. Now we have a maiden error, of course, and the, the error is corrected by just uh, observing that yeah, we have one minus 1xn too much here, so we have subtracted uh, lambda n plus 1xn, as we did here, but this is too much uh, what we did, so we have to add the xn back, and then we take the x bar here. And, and this will for now be unchanged. Okay. Now we just use this uh, the the binomial formula 
so that we get well one plus lambda n plus one squared norm of x n plus one minus x n squared first term plus norm of x n minus x bar squared second term plus now the mixed term to one plus lambda n plus one in a product x n plus one minus x n and x n minus x bar. Okay, nothing special. And now we do basically the, the same for the for the left hand side uh, for the for the for the right for the for the second expression. So minus norm of x n minus x bar squared this thing minus lambda n squared norm of x n minus x n minus one squared minus the mixed expression to lambda n and here inner product of x n minus x bar x n minus x n minus one all right so we see that we get this expression twice so this is like uh, not needed anymore and then we get <clears throat> 1 plus lambda n plus 1 squared norm of x n plus 1 minus x n squared um, minus lambda n squared norm of x n minus x n minus 1 squared and now the the part we're actually interested in interested in the most I should say is the inner product of x n minus our minimizer and this is actually the only place where the minimizer still appears um, with two times uh, one plus lambda n plus one um, yeah okay the, the two appears like in, in all the factors so we can multiply this out um, mine uh, oof, sorry I am not finished yet so this is xn plus 1 minus xn okay and here we have minus lambda n uh, xn minus xn minus 1 okay this is the inner product and now we have collected all the terms with xn minus x bar okay so let's just um yeah of course oh, okay um let's just um now um for some reason we want to have the the xn plus one with a factor of uh, with a factor of one uh, here so we do we divide the whole expression or we we basically take one plus lambda n plus one as a common factor out of the whole expression uh, so this will be 1 plus n, lambda n plus 1 and we still have 1 plus lambda n plus 1 uh, x n plus 1 minus x n norm squared minus and here we have lambda n squared over 1 plus lambda n plus 1 norm of x n minus x n minus 1 Okay, then we have plus 2xn minus x bar, and we have xn plus 1 minus xn. Um, here, this has the factor 1 minus lambda n over 1 plus lambda n. Again, this is the result by of factoring out this um, and we can actually yeah we can we can put this into parentheses here so then we have x so we have plus so we have minus xn and here minus lambda xn so we have xn plus in, in the, the common parentheses up okay and 
closing the inner product and closing these brackets here and this should do it I think and the idea is that we get uh, this expression in our proximal point inequality um, so we choose uh, these things here um, these these numbers here so that we get this expression here with the whole thing um, at least uh, uh, as as the as the product with the uh, x bar for the expression in our um, in in the inequality for our proximal point okay this is some kind of motivation why we why we choose things the way we do okay so um, the so if we set um, if we set me. Now I don't know this by heart. If we said y n just as 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 a like a new variable equal to x n plus lambda n over one plus lambda n plus one x n minus x n minus one. And then x n plus one as the proximal point gamma n g of yeah okay we can let's choose gamma constant here that's that's probably the the most convenient uh, then we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so prox gamma g, um, and then you take not as we had in the forward backward algorithm x n uh, minus gradient f of x n, but instead you take this y n here, which, uh, as I as I mentioned, uh, has the intuition that well we 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 take our progress from the last step and we assume that we have made a step in the right direction and therefore we just add this thing here. Um, and, and, and continue from there. And this factor comes exactly from uh, from the uh, from this tele from this uh, goal of the telescoping sum. Okay, so gamma n minus uh, sorry y n minus gamma gradient of f evaluated at y n. Okay. So what do we have then? So in our proximal point algorithm, uh, we can just formulate the inequality for, for x bar. So by the proximal point inequality, what do we have? Well, we can take the g of uh, x n plus 1 less or equal than ge of x bar um, plus 1 over gamma. Gamma is the step size here. And then you just take, well, yn minus uh, gamma gradient f of yn k minus xn plus 1. This was the inequality. And then xn plus 1 minus x bar. Okay, so if you just ignore the gradient of f here, then you see that yn was chosen in exactly the way that this with the factor with the minus xn plus 1. Therefore, we wanted to have the factor 1 in front of the xn plus 1. I told you so. Um, is exactly what you multiply with um, minus x bar. And this is the, the big point here why I, why I wanted to have exactly this, so they, that we immediately <laughs> uh, are like 
uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, that we immediately know what we have uh, to, to put into our telescope sum. Okay, uh, let's just figure everything else out. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, let's figure out what happens to fxn plus 1. And here we want to use the, the inequality for Lipschitz, grade, uh, Lipschitz continuous gradient. But here uh, we are satisfied with the non-convex version. Uh, the, to use the convex version would just result in the same because we're not really interested in these gradients here for our calculations. Um, it would result in the same but with more things to write. So uh, let's, let's do this with just this. And we want to estimate this by f of yn, okay, therefore this thing. And then we take the gradient of f at yn because this was exactly the inequality. And we have, um, if I remember correctly, so this gives, gives us a, a lower bound, um, an, an upper bound of f of xn plus 1 at, with the first order approximation uh, at the point yn. So this will be xn plus 1 minus yn here. And then, of course, we have to um, add, and what we add is L half norm of xn plus 1 minus yn squared. Okay. Uh, so here we have the um, uh, the the Lipschitz property. Uh, so, and the properties of f I write for short. So this is the Lipschitz property. And at last, we just use, just use the convexity. Still, I told you we are not interested in gradients, so um, convexity is enough for us. So we don't have to use the, the finer property for f right here. Okay, so we want to get an estimation for x bar. So this is guaranteed by just the first order approximation here. Okay, so first order approximation at, at yn is a lower bound for f of x bar. Okay, right. Okay, now we can collect everything here. So we see that f of yn this is just a real number because y in, well, because f takes real values. So this is something we can ignore. So we have f of x n plus 1 plus g of x n plus 1 minus f of x bar minus g of x bar. So uh, just put these things on the left hand side is, and now we see the the thing with the gradients is uh, why we wanted to ignore them. Well, they, they, go, uh, they cancel out automatically. So here we have minus the gradient here in the inner product with xn plus 1 minus x bar, um, plus in the inner product with um, xn plus 1 minus yn. So this would give um, the gradient in the inner product of x bar minus yn. And here we have the inner product in the, in the, in, uh, with yn minus x bar. So these terms are all annihilating, uh, which is great because then the equations don't get so long. And as I told you, uh, what we get here is 1 over gamma and the inner product of, now we just uh, take our definition of, x, uh, of yn, so this is xn plus lambda n over 1 plus lambda n plus 1 uh, xn minus xn minus 1. Okay. Um, this is yn and here the, this is minus xn plus 1 in a product of xn plus 1 minus x bar. Okay. Plus 
L half. Norm of uh, xn plus 1. Yeah, let, let's try, write y in for the moment. Okay, and now we see that um, we get exactly this expression here, uh, except that we have xn plus 1 here instead of xn. Well, that's no big deal. Um, we can fix that. And we have a different factor. So here we had 2 and uh, 2, 1 plus lambda n plus 1. And here we have 1 over gamma. We can also fix that. But otherwise, this is, uh, especially, this is the same expression. Especially, this is the only place where x bar appears. And this is also the only place where x bar appears. Okay, so if we um, if we do stuff here, then we get well um, one over gamma, and here we have basically I I will just uh, now compress the, this thing again to uh, y n minus x n plus one, and this is also y n here. Um, here. So this is xn plus 1 minus yn. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, let's write this again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's write it with xn minus x bar. Then we have made an error, so we have to correct this. So 1 over gamma, and now I write yn minus xn plus 1. And here we have xn plus 1 minus xn, okay, plus L half norm of xn plus 1 minus yn squared. And this is this expression here um, with the factor of 1 over gamma uh, o and also divided by 2 um, 1 plus lambda n plus 1. Okay, so uh, I have 1 over 2 gamma 1 plus lambda n plus 1. Okay. xn plus 1 minus x bar plus lambda n plus 1 xn plus 1 minus xn norm squared minus x n minus x bar plus lambda n x n minus x n minus 1. So this telescoping expression here, okay, just uh, I think we have to put a minus here. Let's just check this. So here we have uh, if we multiply with 1 over 2 gamma lambda n plus 1, then this has the correct sign. But we see that we have plus, n pl pl plus x n plus 1 here, and here we have minus x n plus 1. So this is actually the, 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 the opposite sign. So, if, so we bring this inner product to the left-hand side and bring this to the right-hand side. And we all obviously have to correct our um, mistakes we made. So we have uh, still 1 over gamma times 1 plus lambda n um, um. <laughs> So okay, let's let's first write the things uh, which we already have here so that, that we don't forget them these things here. Plus L half norm of 
xn plus 1 minus yn. Okay. And now let's, uh, let's see which terms we need to keep from here. So these are only those two norms here. And we have brought this to the other side so that it switches sign. We have uh, used this one. And then we just use these terms here. So this will just give us um, so we multiply this with 1 over 2 gamma, so we also have to do this here. So plus 1 plus lambda n plus 1 over 2 gamma. Okay. Uh, uh, norm of xn plus 1 minus xn squared. minus, and here uh, we have lambda n over 1 plus lambda n plus 1. This is good already um, uh, because this is exactly the same expression which appears also here. So lambda n squared over 2 gamma 1 plus lambda n plus 1. norm of xn minus xn minus 1 squared. And since now the board is full, we have to continue our, um, our calculations in the next video.